Fantasy Cityscapes. You're going to be creating an imaginary city on large poster paper. It has to look three-dimensional. Your finished picture must fill the page. Use at least three reference photos. Your picture must have an extreme foreground, a foreground, middle ground, and a background. You must include overlapping. The buildings must have doors and windows that are in correct perspective. You must include at least one staircase. Please figure out how an imaginary character would move through the space of your artwork from extreme foreground to background or back again. You may include things like roads, staircases, bridges, rocket ships, cars, and paths. When I look at your picture, I would like to be able to imagine a character being able to journey through your artwork. You are creating an imaginary three-dimensional world. I came up with this assignment by looking at the book Line and Form by Walter Crane, published in 1900. Just looking at these geometric shapes and learning to see them in the world around you reminds me of how children play with blocks and invent imaginary worlds. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm creating a bird's eye view um, image of a castle using the blocks to block out the geometric forms. Bird's eye view is a natural viewpoint for playing with blocks because you're the giant looking down at them. But I didn't just use blocks. In this case, I needed a cylindrical form, so I used an old coffee can. When you're looking at something straight above that's round, it looks like a circle, but if you're looking at it at even a slight angle, it becomes foreshortened into an ellipse. A pet peeve of mine is elementary school teachers who teach students that it is wrong to erase. Erasing is a vital part of drawing, and it's completely necessary if you're doing any sort of perspective drawing. In this case, I blocked out the ellipse and then created the crenellations within the ellipse. You see how I made the towers the same size by drawing lines across to block out where the top and bottom of the ellipse would be on the other tower. Now in this case, I have a can of cleanser and it just happens to be a cylinder with a cone shape on top. So I use that to inform my drawing of the far tower. And there's my overlapping. If something's close, something's far. As far as the windows being in perspective, if you're drawing something round, then the, well, the sides of the windows are gonna be vertical the bottom of the window is going to curve along with the cylinder and since it's below my eye level it curves down. Since I'm looking down at the window I see inside the window and the bottom edge of the window. What I do not see is the top edge because I'm above it. Now I'm adding a bridge, and I'm using the blocks again to inform me. I'm creating an archway, and I'm using a curved block to inform me. I'm adding stairs, they're a requirement of this assignment, and I want to show you how I mess up on these stairs coming towards me. Eventually, I simply erase them, and I draw lines towards the vanishing point and use those to inform my stairs. They keep turning out crooked. I keep erasing them. And finally, I just, after erasing them several times, draw lines to the vanishing point and use those to inform how I'm going to draw the staircase. The vanishing point is very high on the page because Everything that's going on in the picture is below my eye level. That means the 
horizon line is very high up because remember the horizon line is at your eye level let's see see way in the distance the horizon line where that road disappears that's above practically the entire castle now I need an extreme foreground and I also need a way for a character to get any place in my story I'm solving that problem by drawing a giant bird that is in the extreme foreground that means it's very near the viewers eye and it can get any place in the picture it also takes care of the overlapping because the bird is overlapping a large part of the picture it also remember another requirement of this assignment is to create the illusion of three-dimensional space the bird does that by putting something very large very close to the viewers eye in the extreme foreground and making objects in the distance smaller it punches out the three-dimensional space and gives the entire picture a surreal feeling as if you could actually walk into the picture and be a part of the story And getting back to my original picture that I showed you of the planets, the vanishing point for the buildings on the little planets is actually the center of each planet. And there's also a horizon line that is exactly on the eye level of the person holding the balloons. You can see it very faint because I erased it. Your horizon line is your eye level. Anything above your, your horizon line you're looking up at. Anything below your horizon line you're looking down at. And here again, I have my layers of space. Extreme foreground, foreground, middle ground, and background. And the person is getting to these other planets through his imagination, which is depicted by the balloons and the paper airplanes.